What's the limit as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side of x times the natural log of x? Well, that x is just going to be going to 0. But how about the natural log of x? You might recall the natural log of x looks something like this. As values get closer and closer to 0, the natural log of those values become greater and greater negative. So as you come to 0 from the right, natural log of x will be approaching negative infinity. So here we have something of the form 0 times negative infinity. And if you stop and you think about it, it shouldn't be obvious what this is going to come out to be. If it was just you know, 0 times 0, yeah, obvious. That's just 0. Or if it's infinity times infinity, obvious. That's infinity. But, but what is 0 times an infinity? Which one's going to rule the day? As x is getting smaller and smaller, will it pull it down to 0? Or as ln of x is getting bigger and bigger, will it pull it to infinity, or in particular negative infinity? Or will it land somewhere in between, like negative 5? In order to find out, again, we want to use L'Hopital's rule. But recall our problem. L'Hopital's rule only works when you have something in the form of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So we need to figure out a way of changing this product, 0 times infinity, into something that's either of the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Well, we can use the fact that multiplying is the same thing as dividing by the reciprocal. So multiplying by x is the same thing as doing the natural log of x divided by 1 over x, right? Dividing by 1 over x is times in by the reciprocal, so it's times in by x. Now it's the form of a fraction. This is hopeful. Let's see where the top and bottom are going to. As x goes to 0 from the right-hand side, your natural log is still going to infinity, negative infinity. And 1 over x will be blowing up to infinity. So now it's of the form infinity over infinity. So it's of the correct form that we can now apply L'Hopital's rule. Applying L'Hopital's rule, we get the limit as x goes to 0 from the right-hand side of the derivative of the top. The derivative of natural log is 1 over x all over the derivative of the bottom. 1 over x is x to the minus 1, so its derivative will be negative x to the minus 2. Written another way, that's the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of 1 over x times negative x to the positive 2. Because it's a negative exponent below the fraction, so it comes up as x to the positive 2. Or simply, the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of 1 over x times x squared ends up being just a negative x, which is just 0. Hence, we are able to solve the limit using L'Hopital's rule. Again, whenever you get some indefinite form, some form where it's not clear what it should be, 0 and infinity competing with each other, find some way to, to manipulate the limit to make it of one of the forms permitted by L'Hopital's rule. Then apply the rule until you get down to your final solution. For our last example of L'Hopital's rule, I want us to consider the limit as x is approaching 0 from the right-hand side of the function x to the x. Now again, if you just try and let the limit run, you end up with something of the form 0 to the 0. Now, now you might think that 0 to any power should be 0. That's true, 0 squared or 0 to the 10th or whatever is 0. But you also know that any number to the 0th power is 1, right? Like 5 to the 0th power is 1. So, so the base is saying go to 0, but the exponent is saying go to 1. And so there's a tug of war. The, the one part's calling it to go to 0, the other part's telling it to go to 1. It's not clear where it's going to land. Is it going to land at 0? Is it going to land at 1? Is it going to land somewhere in between? We don't know. So this is an example of an indeterminate form. There are other indeterminate forms that are powers like this as well. So for example, if, if you had infinity to the 0, there would be a fundamental competition. The infinity says go to infinity, the 0 says go to 1, 
the two are competing with each other, so it's not clear where it's going to land. This is different than something like infinity to the infinity. The infinity says grow arbitrarily large, the infinitieth power says keep getting bigger and bigger, so that will just land at an arbitrarily large value, going arbitrarily large towards infinity. This is not indeterminate. This is a clear determinate form. But things like infinity to the zero, or in our case, zero to the zero, these are what we call indeterminate forms. There's one more. If you have one to the infinity, it's not clear where it should land. One to any power should be one. But if, if you have something to the infinity of power, it should either be going off to infinity, or if it's a small number, it should be going off to zero. So there's a fundamental competition between these. So this one is also not clear. So, so these we call indeterminate forms. These are all indeterminate forms. And remember the name of the game for us is whenever you have an indeterminate form, we want to find some way to move it to either the form zero over zero or infinity over infinity so we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Okay, how can I change this from a power into a fraction? The trick is to solve a slightly different problem. Instead of thinking about the limit as x goes to zero from the right-hand side of x to the x, let's go ahead and begin by just taking the natural log. By taking the natural log of this expression, we're able to then use our log properties. In particular, since you had x to the x, you can move that power out front. So the power that was causing the trouble, we can now get rid of. This will just be the limit as x goes to zero from the right-hand side of x times the natural log of x. But this looks quite familiar, right? When you had x times the natural log of x, you said that's just going to zero times minus infinity. That was another indeterminate form that we're able to deal with by writing it as just the limit as x goes to zero from the right-hand side of ln of x over one over x, times in by x is dividing by the reciprocal. And then we solved using L'Hopital's rule that this just comes out to be zero. You take the derivative to the top, the derivative to the bottom, you, you evaluate it, it comes out to be zero. Does that mean our overall limit is zero? No, not quite. Natural log of this limit is zero. So then the question we must ask is, natural log of what is zero? If we know natural log of this is zero, what is this? Said another way, if this limit is L, and you know that the natural log of L comes out to be zero, what is L? Well, raising E on both sides, using E to the, to the both sides, you get that E to the natural log of L, those cancel, L should just be E to the zero, or one your limit here comes out to be just one. This limit is one, because the natural log of one would come out to be zero. So introducing natural log is a powerful way to deal with indeterminate powers. But remember, once you find the limit, that's telling you what the natural log of the limit is. You then have to raise e to that power to find the value of your original limit.